Are you done? Can we start filming? Hey everyone, hope y'all have been doing well. We're back with another video this week about corgis. The last few weeks have been pretty packed over at our house just with all of the training and puppyhood that we've been going through with Kibo. And I'm glad to report that Chibi has finally started to accept that he's part of our family. She's starting to play with him and definitely not as much of a pouty face as she was the first few weeks that he came home. We've been working a lot with Kibo and also taking the dogs on some hikes and going to some dog events like lure coursing. But some of you noticed that Chibi was a little bit left out of some of those activities. And so I wanted to make a video today to talk about corgi health problems, what we went through with Chibi's hip dysplasia, and give a little bit of background on why sometimes Chibi is left out of those more strenuous physical activities. So basically why you guys don't see Chibi come with us all the time is because she went through a lot of orthopedic issues throughout the first few years of her life and so basically her mobility has been affected and she can't really do all the things that a normal corgi or healthy dog would be able to do. I posted a lot about this when we were going through the surgeries, the rehab, but I realized I haven't really talked about it in a while and so I figured why not make a video about it so people who are interested in learning more about potential corgi health problems or people who do have dogs that have just been diagnosed have a story from someone who went through the experience with their dog. We got Chibi from a breeder in Michigan and she came home around eight weeks old. At the time, I didn't really know very much about reputable breeders versus backyard breeders versus puppy mills. I just knew don't go to a pet store if you're going to get a dog. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna work with this breeder and that means that this person must be interested in the well-being of the puppies because what she does is breed dogs. I didn't ask much information of her except what color the dog was gonna be and I put down my deposit and we got Chibi a few weeks later. The first few months of her being home, you know, Chibi has always been Chibi. She's always been this weird couch potato dog that likes to roll around, doesn't really like to walk around very much, and I did notice she was kind of low energy for a puppy, so Kokoro was always super excited, super crazy, always running around, and I know that there are differences between breeds and different personalities, but Chibi always seemed very low energy. We always called her our grandma dog and she didn't have very much endurance. Looking back on it now, I feel like this is probably a sign that she was in pain for much of her puppyhood. In the fall of 2015, so Chibi was just over a year old, close to a year and a half, we had a trip planned to Chicago for a collaboration with West Elm. While we were walking around downtown Chicago and exploring with Chibi, she started to have a limp. And I wasn't really sure what I was seeing because I didn't know very much about dog confirmation or gating, but I just noticed that something was off and she was not putting a lot of pressure on her back leg. So when we got to LA, I made an appointment with a vet and brought her in just to check it out. They ended up doing x-rays and finding that she had severe hip dysplasia. Hip dysplasia is a disease in dogs where the ball and socket of the hip joint are not properly formed. So in Chibi's case, and looking at her x-rays, only about 10% of the ball of the joint was in the socket, meaning that Anytime she walked, it was causing friction and pain in her body. It was a little bit worse in her left leg, and that was the leg that we saw her limping on when we were in Chicago. So the vet recommended that we see a specialist and referred us to an orthopedic surgeon. I was pretty surprised by the diagnosis, and I asked the vet, I thought that hip dysplasia was something that was really common in older dogs, you know, senior dogs, or larger breeds, and he confirmed with me that that is typically the case, but, Corgis are pretty prone to hip dysplasia when they're not bred properly. So what this means is that the breeder that I got her from didn't do any health screening on the parents and the parents potentially had not the best quality hips and then that gets passed on to the puppies and that can lead to some of the puppies having poor quality hips as well. Through this experience, I started learning about why it's really important to get your dog from a reputable breeder if you are looking for a purebred dog. Also, adopt if you can, but 
if you are looking for a purebred dog for a specific reason, like you're looking for their temperament to be something that's predictable, or if you're getting a specific dog for a specific purpose, it's always very important to ask for health test results and get your puppy from somebody who is really looking to preserve the quality of the breed. The options that the surgeon gave us were one, to perform an FHO surgery, which is a femoral headostectomy surgery. Basically what that means is they remove the ball of the joint and then the remaining scar tissue that forms sort of acts as a false ball, I guess. And the joint will heal and with physical therapy, they will be able to walk and run again. And so that was, I think, around a $3,000 option per hip. The other option that he gave us was to do a full hip replacement, which was around nine or $10,000 per hip. And this is typically something that they recommend for larger breed dogs. And because Chibi was so young and such a small dog, they really recommended us to do the FHO. Another option we did have was to manage her pain and forego the surgeries completely and just give her medication on a daily basis to help with the pain and the inflammation and just go the rehab and medication route. And I think that that can work for some cases, depending on how severe your dog's hip dysplasia is. But because for Chidi only 10% of the ball was in the socket, it was so severe that I figured we're gonna do as much as we can to make sure that she can live as full of a life as possible because she was only one at the time. She had her first FHO surgery, I believe in December of that year, and the rehabilitation started pretty much right away. So the good thing about the FHO surgery is that they can start using the leg right away, they can start physical therapy right away, and really what you want is a lot of motion in that leg to start building that scar tissue so that false joint can form. Our journey of rehabilitation for her lasted probably from you know, the end of that year, 2015, all the way through 2018. So two to three years of constant rehab, checking in with the orthopedic surgeon, managing her activity level, and working through different programs to make sure that she was building the right muscles in the right places so that she could live a limp-free life. So the rehabilitation was a lot. I was bringing her to care and to see the doctor maybe two times per week on a regular basis, and then doing all of these other things at home. So really our journey was broken out into a few different parts surgery to remove the actual part of the bone that was causing the issue, rehab to help her build a lot of that strength in her core and help her learn to use muscles in the right places to prevent further injury, and then the third part was pain management. She started on quite a bit of anti-inflammatory and anti-pain medication while we were working through this process. I didn't want to keep her on too much medication for too long, so we actually transitioned her off and started using CBD products with her. And using CBD is something that we have continued to do. So even now, if we're going on a longer walk, we'll give her some CBD treats to help with any potential pain. We really like these treats from Dope Dog. These are the ones that we've been using most recently. And they're three milligram CBD treats that are good for dogs who have joint issues like Chibi, or even if you have an anxious dog that could benefit from some CBD products. Chibi goes crazy for these treats and we've been using them a lot to help with our pain management recently. After those three years of constant rehabilitation, pain management, and just being very careful about her activity level, I would say probably towards the end of 2018 was when we saw a huge improvement in Chibi's structure and her ability to move and go on longer hikes. And I'm proud to report that since then, she has been able to run and you can tell that her speed has increased a lot since when she was just one year old and not able to move very well. She has gone on longer hikes with us, but we only take her on hikes or walks where there's not a lot of incline, where she has to come down a lot of steps or anything like that. She is now seven years old and she's getting a little bit older. I know she's not technically considered a senior, especially for a smaller dog, but because she has had all of these issues, we are being extra careful with her as she's getting older and making sure that she's only going on outings where we know that she might not potentially injure herself or cause any sort of setback in her physical activity. That's basically the story of what happened with Chibi and her hip dysplasia and why you'll sometimes see me posting about it and her limited activity level and why she's not coming with us 
to all the big hikes and everything like that. I just think that it's so important for people to be educated before they get a dog about all the health tests that are out there. Make sure that that breeder does OFA tests on the parents and that you can see the results. So the OFA tests are expensive, that's why not all breeders do them and backyard breeders who are interested in just making a quick buck off of the current popularity of corgis will take advantage and just sell to uneducated owners dogs that have tons of health problems. I would say that joint, ligament, back issues, anything orthopedic like that is super common with corgis. If you just look at how they are structured, their short legs, their long backs, it makes sense that they are more prone to these issues. And even with a lot of well-bred corgis, you can still have these issues. I would just say that anyone who is interested in a corgi should know that. Corgis do come with a lot of potential health problems and it's best to be educated going in than to find out when you already have the dog. Thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to leave any questions you have below about corgi health problems, hip dysplasia, or just orthopedic injuries. If you're struggling with it with your dog, I'm always happy to share any insights that we might have from our experience with Chibi. That's all we got for today's video. We'll see you guys next time.